Oh, right. Oh, wrong. Hello, this is Tim Sandal, back with you with another video. And this video is all about sporocides, which are the um, powerful chemicals that are used as part of clean room contamination control in rotation with a non-sporocidal disinfectant. Okay, so let's move on to the um, presentation. So the first thing is, is that there are different ways to kill and to inactivate microorganisms. So we can use uh, methods of sterilization, such as ethylene oxide gas, which is really powerful and penetrates the materials. We can use heat, which uh, denatures organisms. We can bombard them with radiation. We can filter them out and so on. Now, disinfection is a different concept to sterilization. So whereas sterilization seeks to destroy a high number of bacteria and fungi through a demonstrable process where we can reduce up to a million cells or more, disinfection seeks to bring a high number down to a low number. So it isn't sterilization, but it is still very effective. Um, now there are different types of disinfection and there's a whole range of different types of disinfectants. So disinfection can be about killing or it can be about inhibiting. So for killing we say something is microcidal, for inhibiting we say something is microstatic. And most disinfectants do not kill bacterial spores, they kill all the organisms in their vegetative state and there's previous videos where we've looked at bacterial spores and we've looked at fungal spores and disinfection is not always just chemical it also refers to the use of ultraviolet light for, for example but then we have this special class of disinfectants called sporocides and there aren't many sporocides on the market as we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, there are um, also the term high level disinfectants that sometimes used to describe sporocytes. And there's a good definition in the United States Pharmacopeia that says that a sporocide is an agent that will destroy bacterial spores and fungal spores if it's at the right concentration and if it's in contact for the right length of time with those organisms on the surface. Also, you may get manufacturers who produce products and say they're a sporocide, and they might put in the right types of chemicals. But you do need to prove that against an acceptable standard. So within um, Europe, there is a range of disinfectant test standards and a microbiology laboratory, like the microbiology laboratory at BPL, will have to undergo rigorous testing of those disinfectants against bacteria and fungi under different conditions, so like clean conditions or where there might be the presence of some matter where it hasn't been totally removed by detergents, and maybe under different temperatures and for different time periods. So there's a lot of evaluation that goes into the mix. Um, so, as I said, most disinfectants are not sporicidal, so alcohols are not sporicidal, so IPA, ethanol. Um, quats, or to give them their full name, quaternary ammonium compounds, are not sporicidal, and neither are amphoterics. Now, sporicides are quite nasty chemicals, and they all are. So. There is no nice sporocide on the market. And that's because they're intended to kill all living things. So no chemical can be overly pleasant. So we have to protect the operator through appropriate PPE, such as wearing clothing, that's going to offer a degree of resistance, gloves and respirators. And there are some sporocides that are completely now banned from the market like formaldehydes because they are mutagens and could then cause cancer. So what are some of the common sporocides on the market? 
Well, first of all, there's one called chlorine dioxide, and it's known as an oxidizing agent, which refers to the way that when it gets into a bacterial cell, it basically causes an oxidative reaction that disrupts all the cellular machinery inside the cell. Um, and it comes as a two-part material, so it has an acid base and then something uh, to activate it. So an example of a commercial product uh, that's chlorine dioxide is one called Bicepol. The limitations with chlorine dioxides are that the chlorine activity only lasts for a period of time, about four hours, and they're very corrosive. So when they're applied to stainless steel, they have to have a water rinse fairly quickly, otherwise they will cause um, rusting to occur on the equipment. Then we have one called hypochlorous acid um, that is um, a, a kind of weaker acid that's kind of chlorine activated. Um, we have looked at that one, it does cause a little bit of pitting on stainless steel. Then we have hydrogen peroxide which is another one of these oxidizing agents and it kills organisms by producing these hydroxyl free radicals that kind of zap through the cells and, and kill them. It's a wide spectrum of activity. Um, its kind of um, main downside is that if a surface is not completely clean, then the presence of organic material will inactivate the hydrogen peroxide and it does um, produce um, a, a vapour. There are also on the market combination products. So these are hydrogen peroxide peracetic acid blends together. And these are also very effective. The smell is quite strong. It's like a um, concentrated form of um, vinegar. But again, a um, kind of effective um, product. Uh, an example of that would be spore cleanse. Um, so although these sporicides are really good and really powerful, there are factors that will affect their efficacy, efficacy in terms of how effective they are when they're used in the environment. So we need to make sure they're the right concentration, because that's been specially formulated. We need to make sure that the disinfectant is in contact with the surface for the right length of time and that is renewed if it dries out because you will need to have wet contact time. You're going to get differences in the types of surfaces and you get different physicochemical reactions. If water is needed to dilute a disinfectant that water needs to be of good purity. If the water was hard in terms of um, ions or you might know about tap water at home, if you get scaling that can also help to deactivate the disinfectant so you need to use really good quality water and also how many microorganisms are there. The more there are there, the longer it's going to take to kill those organisms. So temperature's really important. Um, so if we're going to use sporicides in say cold rooms for example, then we would need to increase the contact time of those sporicides in the cold rooms um, because they're going to take longer to kill. And there's a kind of complex relationship between disinfectant contact time and the ambient temperature. And then different surfaces. So um, there's different studies that have been done to show that surfaces differ in how quickly or not they kill things. So we might need to find the optimal time. So often the contact time quoted is one that's been evaluated against a range of different surfaces. But it does stand that um, stainless steel needs a little bit longer than glass, for example. Other factors are you know, cleanliness. I keep emphasizing this in these various videos that you can't just go in and use a disinfectant. You've got to clean the surface first. The application of a detergent is of great importance. Um, you also need to spray and wipe. Simply spraying is no good. It's what used to be called spray and pray. It needs to be sprayed, it needs to be wiped, and it needs to be wiped properly. And we've gone through wiping in, in a previous video as well. And also, um, we need to be mindful of older surfaces where we get scratches and crevices and so on. Then 
um, they can be tougher because spores can get lodged into those surfaces. Um, we also need to um, assess um, whether the disinfectant is going to dry out. So in clean rooms with fast air change rates, and particularly in grade A where we've got unidirectional airflow coming down, then we need to make sure that the surface is remaining wet, if it starts to dry out and it's within the contact time, then we need to put another application of that disinfectant down onto that surface. Um, and we also need to make sure that um, the uh, material is stable across the shelf life and then we've got material in buckets um, so for example um, we've done evaluations to show that it's four hours it's four hours because after a period of time then the active ingredient is not as available and the efficacy of that sporocide is not as great as it once was um, and also we know we need to make sure that we're applying correctly we're using um, appropriate techniques and we're mindful of everything that, that we're doing you know it may not be as um, easy to apply sporocide but doing it correctly is still of the utmost importance so that was the video a quick run through sporocides while they're different to, dis to other disinfectants some of the different types of sporocides on the market and to kind of emphasize that yeah they are nasty but they need to be nasty because they've got to kill everything and we've seen in previous videos that bacterial spores are particularly um, tough to kill so again hopefully this video has been of um, some use and um, you know, good luck with the rest of your day. For me, I'm gonna go back to um, going into um, different dimension and I'll see you later. Good day.